Thank you. I'm extremely honored to be asked to uh, speak to you today. Um, thank you for having me. Originally, when I was preparing my presentation, I was just going to talk about my uh, current work. But uh, honestly, I just don't think I could find a way to make it interesting to most people besides myself. Um, so instead, I'm going to tell you a story. It's called Me and Steve Jobs Jobs. When I was in college, I was a real hotshot computer programmer. In fact, I became friends with John Maida around 1989 at the MIT Media Lab, where we were both hotshot computer programmers. In my junior year, I made my first animated film called Beat Dedication. It's about a robot drummer. His arms and legs are positioned automatically by the software to match the uh, soundtrack, the MIDI soundtrack that you feed into the computer. It may not look like much, but in 1988, this was cool. <laughs> um, it got into the prestigious SIGGRAPH Computer Graphics Festival, and it won some awards. Maybe that's how Steve Jobs got a hold of my name, or maybe somebody at the Media Lab recommended me to him, because he called me, and he invited me out to his new company, Next Computer, for an interview. At the age of 22, I flew out to Palo Alto, and I spent a day with Steve Jobs, touring Next, having lunch, meeting the people there. When I got back to Boston, he offered me a job. They wanted me to work on the 3D interface software for their computer. I said, nah, that's OK. I think maybe I wasn't really ready for a job. Also, he seemed kind of bossy. <laughs> um, <laughs> a couple of years later, uh, I'd completed a second film with fellow student Mike McKenna called Grinning Evil Death. This one featured hand-drawn animation, which I really wanted to try. Um, but instead of pencil on paper, I wrote software to do the animation on a computer using a fancy graphics tablet and stylus. Um, this film also did pretty well. It premiered on the first episode of MTV's animation show, Liquid Television. Um, for my third film, I used the same 2D on 3D technique. Um, it was called God's Little Monkey, and I expected it to be my magnum opus, my masterpiece. I had completed a little of this film when I was in California on vacation, so I decided to try to stop by Pixar, this company that had been making these really fantastic short films I loved. Um, I'd heard they were going to make an entire movie. So I showed a little of my in-progress short to some people there. And the next thing you know, Steve was calling again. <laughs> he offered me a job on Toy Story. Now, I was about to leave Boston for Austin, Texas. I had visions of living like a character in my favorite new movie, Slacker. The bohemian vision portrayed in that film had a really seductive grip on me after eight years of MIT's geek pressure cooker. So, although it was the hardest and possibly the stupidest decision I ever made, I again said, no thanks. I've got to move to Texas to have no job, no friends, and work on my cartoon. <laughs> um, uh, I was afraid, basically, of becoming a cog in a big machine like Pixar. I felt that whatever small thing I had in me to express, it would not get expressed uh, if I were to join up a, with a big enterprise like that. So off to Austin it was. In a few months, I had finished the first part of my film, but I had also become acutely depressed at the realization that to finish the entire eight minutes would take me approximately eight years of my life. I totally burnt out. I did become a slacker. Um, in Austin, though, is where I began working with uh, rotoscoping, which is basically tracing on top of video to create animation. I really wanted to work in a faster, looser way than all the work I'd done before. Um, with each film, it started with an MTV contest, and it progressed through several short films. And with each of those, I would advance the software a little bit, add some feature to make it better. These films were doing pretty well. They toured festivals and were getting attention. And by 1999, there I was in Austin making a rotoscoped feature film with my idol, Richard Linklater. Waking Life was a dream come true. I got to handpick and work with a team of dozens of creative artists 
making a movie that to me was like spiritual successor to Slacker. It's also where I met my wonderful wife, Holly. We've been together 15 years now. So a couple of years go by, and I'm working on this project in a rented office house, on a, um, and the phone rings. The caller ID says Apple computer. <laughs> uh, there's a woman on the line. Today is your lucky day, she says. She wants to know if I'm free the next day for a phone call. And I say, what is this about? I'm thinking it has something to do with our computers, maybe. And she wouldn't tell me. She just said, trust me, I think you'll want to take this call. So the next day rolls around, and me and my coworkers have been speculating on what it could be. And it's Steve again. <laughs> Hi, Bob, it's Steve Jobs. We here at Pixar are working on some really exciting things. And most of all, we're looking for great storytellers. I think you should come out and see what we have going on. Well, I was kind of awestruck because it was 2003. It had been 10 years since I had spoken to him, and those were the 10 years where he, where he had gone from being an ostracized outcast from Apple to returning as savior of the company with the iMac and the iPod. Uh, I really didn't think he remembered who I was. A couple of days later, I spoke with one of the main Pixar honchos on the phone, but I explained that I was still kind of afraid of becoming part of a big machine like Pixar. As I recall, I also somewhat arrogantly expressed my disdain of kids' movies. <laughs> so in the end, I never went out there. Uh, Steve was probably disgusted with me. Uh, what followed for me was A Scanner Darkly, the rotoscoped adaptation of one of my favorite Philip K. Dick novels, starring Keanu Reeves, Woody Harrelson, Winona Ryder, and Robert Downey Jr. Definitely not a kids' movie. Um, it seemed like another dream come true, but in fact it was a nightmare that effectively ended my career in animation. We fought with the studio from the beginning, them insisting that the animation be completed in six months, wanting to see finished footage at the end of the first week of production, even though 25 of our 35-person team were brand new hires who had never worked with the software. I could go on and on, but suffice it to say, it was awful and I ended up walking out with my team. Warner Brothers threatened to sue me unless I signed something that said they could finish the movie without me but with my software. After that, I sort of drifted out of animation. Another 10 years later, and Steve Jobs has now forever changed this world. Like most of us, I was deeply saddened three years ago when he passed. As for me, ironically, I now work for Apple in a manner of speaking. I, have, I write iOS apps. I have a 3D mind mapping app called Headspace and a block building 3D printing app called Voxel. Recently, I wrote a drawing and painting keyboard for iOS 8. Now, altogether, these apps sell a combined total of about 15 copies per day, <laughs> netting me almost $40. <laughs> but that doesn't bother me too much because I'm doing what I want to do. I have my independence. And as you can probably tell from my story, it's the most important thing in the world to me. <laughs> Thanks very much for having me.